Okay, you ready? All right. With the funny mic, I will be reading this story. I'm not going to name it. You can figure out what it is. It was a normal day in Gravity Falls, Oregon. <laughs> well, as dumb as Gravity Falls gets anyway. Dipper Pines was reading his book, and Mabel, his twin sister, was wondering what he was doing. Dipper, are you going to keep your nose buried in that strange book of yours all summer? You got to go out. Have an adventure, Mabel exclaimed. Not now, Dipper said quietly. I'm trying to decode this. He was looking at a cryptogram that said, <laughs> Dipper was officially stumped. He could not figure out what it meant, and it seemed very mysterious to him. Grunkle Stan is going to take us to the diner for lunch, Dipper, Mabel exclaimed. Dipper, however, was not in the mood for dinner. He, 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 publicly, he was publicly humiliated the last time he went. And he, and he thought the food wasn't very good anyway. Mabel, I don't want to go to the diner, Dipper said solemnly. I want to go somewhere else. But there's nothing really else in town unless you count the Taco Bell near the forest, Mabel replied. Taco Bell? Dipper's ears perked up. He had never eaten at a Taco Bell before. And ever since last week, he has been craving for Mexican food for some reason. Why don't we go to Taco Bell today? Did they ask? Taco Bell? Wait, 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 wait. Taco Bell. That's a good question. I do want to go to Taco Bell. I had my heart sink. Okay, Mabel moaned. I think you can go to the call bell if you want to. But don't go back to me when you get out of the car. Fine, I will, Dipper said harshly. Don't let the door hit you on your way out, said Grunkle Stan. But he as he was exiting the mystery shack, the door hit him on the way out. Knock, 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 so anyways, Mumple, M Mabel, and Grunkle Stan went to the diner, and wow, Dipper tried to find the Taco Bell. He had brought his book with him in a couple of bucks. But finding the Taco Bell was harder than he had the previous week thought. He had been looking around town for what seemed like days. The mystery book wasn't helping him either until he saw a flicker of a sign in the forest. And he went into the forest. Why would Taco Bell be in the forest? Dipper asked himself. After hiking for about an hour, Dipper finally got to the Taco Bell. But it didn't, sure didn't look like any other Taco Bell he's ever seen. It was surrounded by a barrage of giant oak trees in an open field, completely different from the rugged terrain of the Oregon forest. The open field was covered in at least three layers of pine needles, which got the attention of Dipper. Um, he stuck his hand into the pine needles. Ow! Uh, that's the sound that Dipper makes when he gets there, because, um, he's a twink, Dipper shouted. A pine needle poked him. It hurts. The, the restaurant, Taco Bell, looked like a silo, sort of. Oh, it was very cylindrical. Outside, it had a rusty picnic table. It looked like no one ever used them at all. Dipper walked up to the restaurant door. Should I go in there? Dipper asked himself. I'm starting to have second thoughts. Why is a small desolate Taco Bell in this forest house from the nearest road? 
but I guess it's my only option. Mabel and Greg Wilson are probably done with lunch right now. And then they were. Mabel wondered why they didn't come back yet. Greg Wilson didn't give a damn. So Dipper entered the restaurant. But he was relieved to see that the interior was normal, except for its high ceiling. There were no customers inside. But Dipper thought that was normal, considering how the franchise was so isolated. He went to the counter. There was only one cashier working the register. Slightly old, deaf, bored out of a school cashier. Dipper decided what he wanted to order, and then he the register. Excuse me, I'll have the only tacos. The cashier interrupted. Okay, I guess I'll have a taco then, Dipper said. What did you say? I said I want a taco. Dipper yelled back. Okay then. <laughs> the cashier said. He went to the back of and when he came out, he was carrying Dipper's taco. That we won. Uh, the cashier said. Dipper gave him the money, went down, went to sit down, he was grimy as staple, and he bit into a hot, spicy, juicy taco, a little bit thick, pure, meat, mild, tantalizing with black beans, and sour, fluffy, sour cream. He enjoyed every single I of that perfectly cooked taco and it still tasted it in his mouth after he swallowed it. But as he was about to bite in for a second time, he felt a churning movement inside of his body, something that he had felt often. Uh oh, Zipper said, and he rushed into the lavatory. Man, that really went through me, Zipper said to himself. For some reason, the bathrooms were hidden in a corner, far from the counter and far from the table he was sitting at. When he walked in, he had found that the bathroom was surprisingly clean, or a fast food restaurant anyway. It found this suspicious. All of the stalls at the store and no one was using their urinals. On cue, would walk out of the stalls and Dip didn't pay much attention to who was walking out, but he was wearing black. He was wearing all black and had a plastic bag with him. Dip just had to go. Unfortunately, he didn't make it in time. He checked his pants and found the worst of all. Diarrhea, they said. Ugh. He was about to leave the stall when he noticed a bulge in his pants. He, he touched the bulge, and once he touched it, he knew exactly what it was. It was an erection. He was completely aroused after touching it and started to do it some more. Eventually, he was ready to hard masturbate. He didn't know what was arousing him, but he knew that he was. He took off his blue short and his soiled underwear, easily revealing his medium size, but not small, penis. His tip was bright and red, like Rudolph the red nosed reindeer. Dipper started to yank his Johnson fast. Uh, the fire adventure was getting pumped. Different soiled hands started to feel bits of pre cum on his dry fingers. Eventually, the medium sized dick couldn't take it anymore and burst into a explosion of cum. The cum got all over the walls of the toilet and Dipper felt proud. He had creamed himself for the first time, but he was upset it wasn't over Wendy. No, Dipper thought. Oh, this is not enough for me. I need to release this. With his erection still active, Dipper began yanking his penis again. It was much quicker, and Dipper comes quicker. <laughs> I'm just going to reread that. It was much quicker, and Dipper comes quicker.
It was a bunker released last time, and it began to rain to proceed. Super felt more proud than the fuck in his heart. I can't. His heart about to burst. His heart about to burst from all the drama. I've <laughs> come falling down from the ceiling. He felt as heavy as he felt on the first snowfall of the year. He stuck out his tongue to taste the cum. He arrived again. He arrived again. <laughs> He stuck out his tongue to taste the tongue. Shiny from the poppy fluorescent lighting in the bathroom. He tasted it and he thought it was... <laughs> he thought it was one of the best tasting things in the world. Better than a lot of just... Better than the rarest pig and better than the taco he was having earlier. But... By now, he couldn't stop it. He couldn't leave now and miss out on his great masturbation adventure. He wanted to take the cum. He scooped a handful of it off the stall and put it in his wet, dirty mouth. <laughs> he grabbed. That's how it spelled. Grabbed. He grabbed another and another, and he was getting more aroused. Consuming the cum, and he released another load. <laughs> That's where it's coming from. Dick said his stuff from all over his face and teeth. Dick then came up with a solution to get more blood to wear a master. Asian <laughs> No. <laughs> Experience. He was going to put it in the act. He tilted his head down and sat down on the cum covered ground and grabbed his hardened Johnson and stuck it in his mouth. What <laughs> firmly Dipper <laughs> began Dipper began to suck on the very hard rock. <laughs> He sucked it like the long top he got at the county center a while back. Tasted a lot like it, too. Mm. The legs were so expertly over his shoulder that he could have been a gymnast. The more he sucked on his hard dick, the more Arouse's legs shook. <laughs> Once it was funny. Oh, wait, no, I already read that. Oh, I already read that, too. <laughs> Eventually, just when he was going to get out, he came in his mouth. It was the best thing he had ever experienced. And he kept on performing fellatio on himself. As he was stimulating himself orally, he accidentally fell to the side. He broke from his penis and cummed on the floor. The floor was covered in so much of Dipper's cum that he started to make a snow angel in the cum. <laughs> or a cum angel. <laughs> he was eating from the process. When he looked in his side, he immediately became so hard that the red tip was such a short pubic hair. He saw what was causing it. <laughs> he saw his underwear covered in dark. Brown, beefy. 
he held up his underwear, which was covered, and they come to four and marvel that it's erotic beauty. The feces were so beautifully ejaculated and so smooth and sticky brownness. So perfect. They fell in dip of white hands. He wanted his shit. He held the brown underfish like a the brown underwear like a fish on a lure and but it's sticky white. <laughs> no. He held the brown underwear like a fish on a lure. He <laughs> put the sticky white lips into the sticky brown feces. Mm. Oh, that was really good. <laughs> his tongue was rubbing all the crap all over his tidy whities making his mouth all brownish white mess. He was biting into the shit and stuck it into his mouth. It was more stimulating than ever before. He now knew that he didn't need Wendy or Mabel. Ayo? Mabel? <laughs> um, um, or any other girl in the Gravity Falls line. It is a big problem. It was, it was only shit. He took a scoop of the feces. And in, and in parentheses, he had a lot of that. <laughs> He began to spread it up his dick. Every time he spread the cap, he was getting more and more aroused. His dick was completely brown and he came again. I'm shaking in fear. He filled up all those spots in the stall that weren't covered in dickers come once again. Dipper took big scoops of the cum and consumed it in large gulps. Now Dipper had to put this brown, sticky feces all over his penis again. And boy, did he do a good job. The brown stuff all over his external genitals and his testicles. <laughs> <laughs> he had cummed a few more times here and there. Now his be his 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 brown channels needed to be cleaned, but Dipper didn't have them. Surprise! So he had to suck this shit off. <laughs> he brought the erection out of his mouth and began to stop. <laughs> this time he made it very clear to lick the feces off with his tongue. And as soon as the tongue touched the dick, he comes. Okay, I'm just going to pause here. I, I, I love how it's cummed and not came the entire time. Anyway, okay, I'm going to continue now. He's having the most fun he had ever had him at Bath and Sons. So that's who he was, where he lived, where he was, or what he was eating. Sweet. Cum. And he just thought, what a great idea. By the way, this chapter is called Holy Crap. And the next one is called Bloodbath. Mm. Dipper took a scoopful of that diarrhea in the scoopful of cum and he put it in the toilet. He flushed down, but before it went all the way down, he grabbed a, a wet pile of thick ink cum and he stuck it in his mouth. It was consumed. What? You say at least he cleaned up. Oh, my God. 
people were consuming all of that shit. I, I, I hope, you know, you have to edit this and, like, cut it down because keep laughing. Oh, no. Dipper was consuming all this shit come in toilet water and it tasted great. <laughs> I know that makes it more fun. And because of this time, instead of putting the shit and cum in his food hole. Mmm, <laughs> the food hole. I guess it's big as food now. Yummy, yummy, in my tummy. <laughs> he started a leather on his penis again. He wanted more of his Johnson, but that would be a fatal mistake. Once it was cut, once it was covered again, he put it back in his mouth and began sucking. But did it too hard. As he was sucking, he accidentally on his dick. As soon as he tasted the blood, he broke out in coitus and saw his lacerated penis. Oh, God, no. Not his penis. His five inches are going to turn into a no inch. Digital footprint. Digital footprint. Digital footprint. Ooh, it's about to be huge. You saw a mix of blood and cum running out of it like lava as his erect muscle pointing it out. Dipper grabbed it and grimaced in pain. He winced at it in the poor side. He snapped out of it all and tried to figure out a solution to the castration. He put some more diary on it, but that didn't stop bleeding. Dipper spit out the piece of dick that he bit off and tried to reply it, but that didn't, that didn't work. No matter how many times... By the way, I have a job interview tomorrow. I have a job interview at like 1.30 and then I have therapy at 3. I'm really late. I just want to let you know. No matter how many times he tried to reattach it, they all failed. He put more of his reproductive fluids in the castration, but they only made his penis swell up. Like the Goodyear blimp. Oh my god, why would they compare this to the Goodyear blimp? He put more of his reproductive fluids on the castration, but they only made his penis swell up. Like the Goodyear blimp. Dipper was licking the blood off, trying to stop it, but the blood was coming faster than he could lick. Now he was in ultimate pain and felt nothing like this. He screamed as loud as he could and felt like nobody could hear him. He was screaming louder and louder, screaming, Help! I bit my dick off! He was going insane. He started to bang against the phosphorus oh. as loud as he could yell. After a four or five minutes with the large mix of blood coming deep on the floor, he was banging his head against the saw. The banging was louder than the loudest thunderstorm, and yet no one came for help. Dick was alone in the bathroom. Alone in the saw, alone with his beloved dick, and now uh, near death. Unfortunately, he was near death. Now near to death, and unfortunately, he was near death. I love the grammar. Oh my god, look at this. Okay, okay, I'm just going to pause for a minute. I'm just going to pause for a minute.
I think you could lose a wish right now. A wish right now. A wish right now. Oh my god. I'm not done. I'm not done. How much do I have? I have Dear Brother, May with Guilty Pre Pleasure, Romance Blood Bath, and Delicious Taco. Oh. After one final blow to his head, the now screaming dipper was as silent as Christmas Eve. He's not, Christmas Eve is not silent. He fell to the floor, his eyes turned skyward, and fell into a mix of his own blood, cum, and feces. <clears throat> At the ministry shack, Mabel was feeling quite worried about the Digger. Digger. <laughs> no, no, not Digger. I'm not Digger. He's going to be called Digger for the rest. Digger. For the rest of the um, for the rest of the uh story. So she went off and she had tried to find him. She went off into the forest first. She knew where it was. Surprisingly, she got there best time than Dipper. She entered the newly cleaned doors. She immediately used the one spit and taco, one of the tables, and immediately knew it was Dipper's. Mabel rushed into the bathroom, into the men's bathroom. <laughs> and in parentheses, I hope you're listening. She likes to use the urinals. No context. Yes. And rushed into the bed. random stalls. It was her brother's. Mabel looked at how messy the stall was and how it used to do the deed. Her pink sneaker wear was sticky from stepping into the reddish brown mess of fluids. She walked around the metro saw for a bit and then saw the most horrid thing she could imagine. Dipper's corpse. Babel was welled up in tears at the sight of it and began to cry. <laughs> It's like me. It's like it's like me right now. I'm crying like every night. Anyway, Maples. Oh, I already read that. As she was crying, she sat down in the pile of blood, teasing. Um, of that dipper's life was fake. It was beautiful. As she threw the facial features, the complimented the circle of thumb around his I can't. Oh, oh Dipper. Oh, Dipper. Mabel, Mabel said through her tears, Let me clean the white stuff off your lips. Mabel, Mabel brought Dipper's head up to hers and she kissed him. After pouring out of the kiss, Mabel enjoyed it. So she kissed him again. But it ain't just necrophilia, bro. I like I like how that I like how that that's what you're focusing on. You're not gonna focus on that it's 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 her brother. There, I, 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 there, there is one that is worse, but I'm not gonna say it because it goes against the community guy mom. So, <laughs> Mabel brought Dipper's head up to hers, and she kissed him. After pouring out of the kiss, Mabel enjoyed it, so she kissed him again. She didn't want to let go of Dipper. Not now, not when he had just died. He was her brother after all. She held Dipper's naked corpse in her arms and. She began to feel a tingling inside of herself. Quote, and I want you to listen carefully. And a secret dirty side. No, no, no one would care if he just did it, right? He, he's dead today. I know I would. And this is back in the thought. 
She immediately came up with an answer. She pulled Dipper's head up to her head and kissed him again, only it was a French kiss. Mmm, all that much thumb in her mouth. Once Mabel was done, she put the body on the floor. Then Mabel got down on the flu, which covered the floor, too. Mabel started going, kiss crazy. Crazy spelled with a K, by the way. Kiss crazy frenzy with Dipper. That made it look like Dipper was alive. The tongue went into Dipper's deep smell. Scraping the feces and thumb off the roof of Dipper's mouth. Mabel was shaking even more now, but her tongue was touching Dipper. She unzipped her jeans and slowly slid them off and threw them at the wall. And they were stuck. They were stuck there from the cum. Mabel was shaking even more now that her tongue was touching Dipper's. She unzipped the jeans and slowly slid them off and threw them at the wall. They stuck there from the cum. Mabel revealed her nice, clean, exposed, virgin vagina. This is so hard to read. Oh, it's so hard to read. She took the Dipper's course. Oops, good lord. Not noticing the eternally bleeding penis and brought it closer to the cervix. She rubbed her clitter for a rouse of her purposes, purposes before she stuck it in. Once the dick was firmly in, she finally felt joy in her life. Oh god, oh my god. Oh, just pause for a minute, just pause for a minute. Hold on. Check what I sent you. Mm. He loved the feeling of losing it to a brother's dead body. And he started to get the oddest feeling. She lost it. She finally lost it. She squealed in happiness. This is spelled wrong, mind you. And started a French kiss dipper. Her tongue almost touched Dipper's uvula. She kept holding onto his lacerated dick in her vagina and sloshing her tongue all around in Dipper's mouth. She kept pulling it in and out with Dipper's dick. Blood was getting on her urethra wall. It's so wrong. Oh my god. Not noticing one bit, she did not want to leave the body. Not now. She would kill herself. It didn't mean they could be in coitus forever. If only Dipper could kiss her back. After what seemed like hours, it wouldn't fit in. Mabel finally looked down at the pretty messed up penis. Mabel couldn't look away from it. It was now swollen to the size of her head in a whole mix of rainbow colors, still spewing lifeless cum. Oh, those poor swimmies. Mabel vomited on it, which only made it worse, and it grew bigger and bigger. Oh, different. She, be, she said softly, and Mabel started to scream. <laughs> she was horrified at the sight of it. She started to bounce again. It's like daytime now. The hard time is, oh my god, it's five, it's five in the morning. She was horrified at the sight of it and began to bother again. She tried to put the giant mix of blood on vomit and feces on the dick, but it wouldn't work. She tries to suck it all off, but found herself enjoying sucking in the taste of Dipper's penis blood.
<laughs> Fucking like this. Mm. Mm, this Mountain Dew is not tasting good right now. It's tasting like penis blood. She kept on sucking on it. Tasting the blood. And touching and fondling dickers. Dead erectile muscle. She was ecstatic. She was more happy than she had ever had been. More happy than she ever was before. She was squealing with delight. The stall door opened with a crack, and Mabel took notice. Huh? She asked. The door started to open more, and in parentheses, it wasn't locked. No! Mabel started to get nervous. And in parentheses, it, it says, it wasn't locked. No. <laughs> no. Mabel started to get nervous. She didn't want to go to jail for necrophilia. She was only a child who bit off more than she, who bit off more than she could chew, just like Dipper did. <laughs> she got too ahead of herself after her thing. After her twin brother for so long, it was the police. She had no hope. She hoped it was just another Taco Bell employee who would listen to her and help her out. Bruh. The stall door finally burst open, and standing in front of it was a man dressed in black. He had a Taco Bell logo sewn to the front left of his police jacket. He was wearing squeaky shoes that squeaked across the back of the bathroom floor. He was wearing dark sunglasses. The mysterious man walked up to the two and slowly, Mabel stood up on her feet, fear and blood on her face. The man stared at Mabel for a long time until he finally said, Are you supposed to be in this bathroom, young lady? <laughs> Mabel was shaking in horror now. She turned to the face, different, naked, violated body, and turned to the face of the man again. <laughs> Shaking with tears in her eyes. Mind you, like, half of that was actual stuttering. The man brought himself closer to Mabel's face. So you're in my personal space. Mabel tried to manage the man was expect inspecting the red spot on Mabel's cheek. After several seconds, the man touched the spot, trailed the spot, trailed his finger in it, put the finger in his mouth. Blood, the man whispered to himself. What, what, what did you s s say, sister? Mabel asked, and not understanding what he was saying. Little girl. Do you know what that is on your cheek? The man asked. Mabel repeated what the mysterious man did to her cheek. He said back to me, it's, 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 it's blood. And with the blood being on your cheek, have you developed, shall we say, a desired taste for it? The man asked back. Mabel did not notice the retractable chisel in his right hand. Yes, I just didn't I just, I just. The man quieted her. If you look the addictive taste of it, why did you just say so? And without warning, the man cut her across the chest with the chisel. She screamed at the pain of it. Blood started to pour out of the diagonal cut fast, almost covering her stomach. You can look that up. Your blood probably tastes better than that, kids. The man said, pointing to Dipper. Then he, the man gave another cut across her face. She screamed again. <laughs> Louder this time. Now you can get the blood close to your face. 
and just to make sure you send it. The man then split her across the neck. She could not scream this time. The man went into her neck and pulled out three vocal cords. Specifically three, no more, no less. I counted it, I was there. The man stretched the cords out. And he jumped a rope with them while slashing Mabel across the face multiple times. <laughs> Man, dude. When her face was cut so many times that her nose fell off, the man decided it's time for the scalping. Oh my god. <laughs> the scalping. He took out a bigger knife and slammed it right above Mabel's eyebrows. The man gripped his knife handle and still in her face began to make a deep cut. The man put all the strength into it because he decided to make the hardest part first. He tried to do it the same. He tried to do it right on the skin, but sadly, did not do the job he liked. Mabel's head was now topless. The top of her skull exposed and lightly cut, so you could see her brain inside the skull. The pieces of muscle and flesh were attached to Mabel's hair and scalp, so the man cut them off. The scalp was now as thin as skin, because it is skin. What? And still full of Mabel's hair, he hung the scalp to the scalp, the scalp to the scalp, up on the whore on the door. The, the whore on the door. I'm not making this up. Hold on. I'm not making this up. Just to... It would be his size, his prize. Something that he'd keep for himself. Now the man prepared for the rest of the body. <gasps> Almost done. <laughs> what he wanted to do next was make just to make it rain, not water as you think, but he was gonna make it rain something else. He got down oh no, this is terrible. I don't I don't even know if I could read this. I'm gonna get cancelled. On YouTube <laughs> he, he got uh, just a disclaimer, just a trigger warning, this gets really bad. Um, to anybody watching out there for some godforsaken reason if you're still watching this. I'm just I'm just reading what it says. <laughs> I'm just reading what it says. <laughs> he got down to Mabel's blood covered slash chest, grabbed her not fully developed breasts, and began to cut off Mabel's nipples. <laughs> when she was done, the blood started to come out like old faithful geyser. He was amazed by the sight of the sounds of blood. He <laughs> mm. <laughs> began to dance around in the stall, stepping in all the fluids that were on the floor. Bro was playing a dance dance revolution on the brown, white, and red. <laughs> When the blood was starting to flow a little less slowly, the man moved on to the legs. The man hooked Mabel's nipples up next to the scalp. <laughs> I don't know. In parentheses, <laughs> the nips for his prize, too. <laughs> the nips were the prize, too. And he started to cut Mabel's legs. He started to cut faster than a race car and talking about his smooth asphalt track. <laughs> the cut kept on appearing on her kneecaps until the cat bone was exposed. 
By that time, her lower legs and body were only attached by a thin string of cartilage. Oh, this is making me extremely uncomfortable. Then the guy moved on to her toes with the knife as sharp. <laughs> There's one this this one more part I need you to hear. One more part, one more part. With the knife as that was knife. With the knife as sharp as knife, he cut every one of her little toes off. Mabel's body was losing so much blood that she started to flatten out. By the way, if you haven't put your headset on yet, you can. The place was mostly coming out. The place where it was mostly coming. This is the last mention ever toes. Um, this sentence, I think, is the one. Yes, this is the last one. <laughs> the, the place that it was mostly coming out of was her toes. The toe blood was making a sea of red on the floor. Ooh, new toes. Oh, yeah. The man was now with his Taco Bell police jacket splattered with red on it. Dug the knife into the label. Mabel. 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 That was genuine. That wasn't acting. Mabel's left foot. He began to make another cut similar to what he did to her scalp and began to cut the skin off of her foot. The cut was much better than what he did to the scalp. He did the same to the other foot and then hung the skin up next to this. I just want to get this done with. Mabel's feet were just now a big mess of fresh muscle, blood, and nerves. Mabel, in parentheses, who is still alive? So, no, man. And that's a, a, funny, a funny prank to play on your friend, just pull the exposed nerves on their feet. was now completely exposed to all the cuts she was getting, her mouth hanging open like a gaping person. <laughs> like a gaping person. <laughs> the bread was already covering her chest, and since the man actually had a soul, he didn't want to suggest this, subject this little girl to the misery she was about to endure. Don't tell me he fucks her. I swear to God, if he fucks her. I can't. I can't. We took the long knife and stabbed her in the middle of the chest where her heart was. Blood poured out. I bet more than her cut off nipples did. Oh my god. Once most of the blood was done spewing, the man got down near Mabel's bloody but Oh no, please. Oh no. Oh no. Do I have to read this? <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> he carefully took his knife. Okay, another disclaimer. I'm just re I'm just I'm just re I'm just reading what it says. And I I'm I'm doing this against my will. He very carefully took his knife got down near the cervix. It's not the cold. And stuck the knife blade up into the hole. <clears throat> While in Mabel's clock cave, the man was rotating. <laughs> how old? How old is Mabel? She's like she's like thirteen. The man was rotating the knife, cutting up the walls of Mabel's empty chamber. The tip finally got into the inside of it and carefully snipped every one of Naples' fallopians. Hmm. 
it, it was a hard job. He had to be very good. How much time is it? Um, it's five thirty. He had to be. He, he, he had to be very careful. He had done it many times before, but today wasn't his best day. He accidentally split some of the uh, like the maple's vagina, cutting into the muscles surrounding surrounding it. The man was very embarrassed. I hope no one will notice that. Oh God! God, I don't stop. He took the knife out of Mabel's hole with ovaries and two fallopians on the blood covered plate. There's only two anyway. I'm getting lightheaded. The man got out a big plastic trash bag and scraped the knife on it, making the contents on it go into the bag. And since his knife handle was covered in more blood than it usually was, he accidentally let it slip and dug the knife into Mabel's right shoulder. Perfect. The man said ominously. The man got a pair of vinyl gloves and put them on his hands, and he gripped the knife tightly, wanting a deeper cut than he had before. And while digging after digging and digging, the man's knife got thrust, thrust to the other side. Once the man saw the job he did, he threw his arms and he threw the arm in the trash bag, and he felt quite pride and felt that he could achieve, easily achieve his goal now. So he went to the other mind you, her nipples are still hanging up on the on the on the on the stall. I uh, just wanted to just wanted to point that out. Uh, so we went to the other side of Mabel's nearly skin body and began to cut that arm off. It was easier to do than the other one, surprisingly, and once he was done with that, he threw the arm into the garbage bag. I'm sure it just makes it makes it makes this so much better. Uh, using the the funny mic, they were they were dying. They were dying. He was now almost flat oh, due to all the blood loss. The man had tasted some of it and saw that he could get a jar for a jar for S O U R later. Now the legs, the man did the same with the legs. It felt like they were easier to cut off each time. The legs were off, and the man threw it in the bag. And Mabel's body was flat now. Almost all the blood from her body was, if you can't tell, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get this done. Embracing Mabel's, <laughs> embracing Mabel's, and just endeavoring my body, he hugged it, licking the remaining blood off, and put the body in the bag. The man now just had noticed it was on the floor, and figured, he must have caused all this on the walls. Another one couldn't hurt. The man said to himself, and he started to cut off Dipper's appendages. He did it in the same order and same manner as Mabel's, and it was done quickly. He put all of it in the bag as well. Now it's time to clean up. And as you can imagine, the ball, the bathroom stall was a big mess of fluids. The man got out a big chisel and started to chisel to come off the walls into the bag. It took a, it took a long while, about two or three hours, or, or three hours, you know? <sighs> Once he was done, he needed to clean the floor, so he went outside into the stall and got a mop that he had had with him the whole time. Shocking. He mopped the whole mess up of things off the floor and into the bag until the floors looked respectable for a fast food bathroom anyway. The man got out some toilet paper clean, toilet cleaner and cleaned the toilet because it was way more messier than the stall itself. After a few minutes, the toilet cleaning was over, and the saw was clean. As was clean as a new car. It smelled like it, too. The man left the bathroom in the saw and, and the claim ready. F- the, the man left the bathroom in the saw waited, ready to clean its next victim. The man got out of the bathroom and went back into the kitchen of the Taco Bell. He got near the machine, and it was a very odd looking machine. It had a crank on the side and a funnel on the top, and something shaped like a taco on the side near a conveyor belt. I don't have to do everything myself. The man questioned. He hung his blood stained jacket, glasses, and revealing his Taco Bell employee uniform. He was thoughtless. The man took the bag and one by one started to put the body parts into the funnel. Once the bag was half empty, he kept putting more parts in. Only this time he turned the crank. 
and once the bag was empty, popped out two tacos. They weren't tacos, really. They were actually human body parts in the shape of tacos. No, I didn't know that. That's that's crazy, bro. That's crazy. They they went down the conveyor belt, and the employee using spray cans began to print the body parts. And once they got Taco Bell tissue paper at the end of the conveyor belt, they looked like genuine tacos. The grand, the man grabbed one of the tacos and wrapped it in the, wrapped it in this, wrapped it in tissue paper. I can't even read this. And went to the front of the counter. He handed it to the old man cashier. Then went back into the depths of the kitchen. Here's your tacos. Uh, the cashier said to the fat customer, You're welcome, as he said, handing the cashier money. The end.